Today we're going to be tying the red and white chuck and duck. Start your thread base behind the white cone. Stop it about halfway down the hook shank. Now we're going to lock our cone in place by advancing the thread in front of the cone, building up a small thread dam, and then going back behind it making a few wraps and then bringing it in front and alternating back and forth between the two. We're going to take a healthy clump of white craft fur and separate the shorter fibers from the long by simply by pulling them out of the end. Do this a handful of times until you get most of the shorter fibers out of your clump. Once you have your white clump of craft fur prepared, Take it and pinch it against the hook shank. Then make a couple loose wraps before pulling it tight. Then work the crafter around the shank. And finish tying it in by making thread wraps over the cut ends. Now we're going to take a clump of red crafter and prepare it the same way we did the white by pulling all the shorter fibers out of the clump. Then we're going to tie it directly above the white craft fur using the same method, pinching it against the top of the shank, making a loose wrap, followed by pulling it tight, and then finish tying it in. If need be, if your tag ends are a little bit long, feel free to trim them up just behind the cone. Once you're finished trimming, make a few thread wraps capturing all the cut ends. After pulling all the shorter fibers out of your tan craft fur clump, pinch it on top of the red craft fur. Make a couple loose wraps and then pull it tight. And finish locking it in by making thread wraps over the cut ends. Take another clump of white with the short fibers pulled out and tie it in on top of the tan. With a loose wrap, pulling it tight, and then finish tying it in with a few more thread wraps. Prepare two clumps of white craft fur with the shorter fibers pulled out. Now we're going to reverse tie these two clumps in, one on top of the shank and one below. So have the tips pointing out towards the front of the fly and tie it in directly above the shank. Then take your second clump and reverse tie it in the same way on the bottom of the shank. You're going to want to trim a little bit of the tag ends, but not too much. All you're trying to achieve is to make it so there's not a gap when you push back this reverse tie. If you leave this, those tag ends squared off, you'll be able to tell that there's a layer missing there. By kind of feathering it in, it will give it a nice, smooth, bulky appearance. Before you push the craft fur back, make sure you have good coverage all the way around the fly. Then try to hold all of the craft fur back at once. And start making wraps and building up a little bit of thread dam to hold all the craft fur facing rearward. Also, just something to remember. You don't have to make this tie-in perfect. You don't have to get it super tight up inside the cone. You want a little bit of a gap to help build that head shape under the mylar tubing. So it doesn't have to look perfect, and it doesn't have to be tight. Actually, you'd rather it not be tight to the head. Now we're going to tie in five to eight strands of crystal flash. Make a loose wrap and pull the tag ends just so they slide underneath the cone and then finish tying them in. Then trim them to your desired length.
Now you can throw in your whip finish and cut your bobbin free. After pulling apart some of the mylar tubing, slide it up over the cone. Push it far enough back that you have enough room to get your thread going again. After you build a little thread base, you can cut the tag end and then slide the mylar back forward. Make one loose thread wrap around all of the ends of the mylon and then pull it tight. Then build up a little bit of a nose. Once you've built up that little bit of a thread base, you can now throw in a whip finish and now cut your bobbin free. And while we get the scissors out, we're going to go around that eye of the hook and trim any of the mylar strands that are sticking out and just clean up the nose of this fly. Take your bobbin and tie your thread in again just behind the cone. The purpose of this is just to give that rounded shape of the head. It doesn't have to be a ton, it just has to be enough to hold in place and be able to whip finish. Once you've thrown in your whip finish, you can cut your thread free. Now we're going to take our bodkin and kind of run it through the mylar. Be careful, as you can see, if you grab too much craft fur, you're going to have a hard time pulling the mylar apart. Now it's up to you if you want to have long, flashy strands or keep them short. It's all up to you. So you can go as far back picking it free as you want and those strands will just get long and sweepy. Now we're going to place our 3D eyes. Simply stick them on either side of the cone. After you stick on the second 3D eye, we can start spreading UV resin over this head. We're going to start off by coating over the eyes and then hitting it with our UV light to cure it before moving on. So we're going to just start going around and coating this head and building up layers of UV resin on it. The thicker it is, the more durable this fly will be, and the bigger, bulkier head you'll have. You can stick with a standard two coats, or you can go up as high as you want. But just keep alternating between coating and drying. After you put on your last coat, just make sure you've cured all of the resin before moving on to the next step. Now we're going to finish off rounding off the back of the cone. For this, I'm going to use a thick UV resin. Alternate between doing small layers and spreading it out with your bodkin, then curing it with your UV light, then moving on to the next layer. Trying to do it all at once can be, can be challenging. And then grab your thick UV yet again and apply some more UV resin behind the cone. Working up higher on what I would call the hill of the cone. Because if you keep building it up further down the shank, it won't create that rounded shape. It'll just make the head longer towards the back of the fly. After applying your last layer, I like to use the spin trick. If you have a rotary vise, you can take your vise and just spin the fly, and it will help round out your UV resin. 
At the same time, I'll start to use the UV light to cure it as I continue to spin the fly in the vise. After doing my last coat of thick, I'll go every, over everything once more, including the thread wraps, a little bit of the mylar tubing, and the head again before curing everything. Doing this much UV work on a single fly can be time consuming if you haven't had a lot of UV experience in the past. But a couple nice things about it is the more you do it, the faster you'll get. And number two, putting this much UV on the nose of the fly, over the eyes, and the threads will make this fly extremely durable and hold up much longer. And there you have it, the chuck and duck.